An unusual and quite topical module from China. This one is designed for use inside refrigerators for removing odours. And the listing on eBay described it as white positive and negative ion generator to taste fresh fridge to 20 volt. And these modules, it comes from a manufacturer uh, called, uh, what's the name of it? It's Trump P, Trump XP. And they manufacture ionizers, they manufacture ozone modules, and they also manufacture these dual positive and neg negative ionizer modules. And they're kind of in vogue at the moment because a lot of uh, a lot of uh, organizations in America are currently installing systems like this in their air handling systems because the combination of positive and negative is supposed to create uh, hydroxyl radicals. It's one of these things that's very hard to prove either way. But what they do produce is a trace quantity of ozone. Now, I have tested this. I put a meter in series with it. I've got the Cliff Quick test here to apply 240 volts across it. And when I turn it on, there is a very slight frizz noise. I'll hold it up to the microphone. You might, you might or you might not hear it. I don't know if you will, but I can actually show you the output in terms of uh, voltage difference in the air. So if I bring in a meter and I set it to the 20 volt range, I can monitor for a potential difference in the air from this unit by sticking the negative lead to earth in the screw of my solder iron here. And if I hold it in front of the positive electrode, you'll see the voltage immediately goes up to, well, in this case, it's, it's showing a negative voltage of a couple of volts, just hovering the, the uh, connector in front of the uh, negative output emitter brush. But if I go over to the positive side, it then shows a lower uh, output, but with a positive voltage. And uh, it does specifically say in the guide for this, oh, it's way up to about six volts now. It does specifically say for this module, which is quite unusual, that the negative output is much higher than the positive. And looking at it, that could be partly in the circuitry. We'll find out. I'm going to open it. But that could also be down to the fact that these little carbon fibre brushes, well, let's open it. I know the power is on, but oh, uh, the carbon fibre brushes in here, it's, it's low current. Don't know if it's referenced mains or not. Maybe I should check that. But it's uh, low current on these little carbon fibre brushes. And uh, the... Where was I there? I, I've, I've been distracted. I got distracted as I opened it there. Uh, the carbon fibre brush, the negative one, is much larger bunch of strands than the positive, which is a small bunch. I don't know if that's the main factor here or if it's down to the circuitry in here because I'm trying to guess what's inside. It, it's so small. I'm guessing, well, I want to depot this. I think we all want to depot it. I think I shall depot it. So I'm going to go and stick this in in uh, a suitable solvent and see if we can eat all this stuff away from round here and get access to the circuit board. I'm not sure if I can just use brute force to snap the plastic off at the moment. Is it going to grip on quite tightly? Ye oh, actually, it's not too bad. I mean, uh, I like this enough that I've ordered another one before doing this. I have to concede. Uh, so let's peel this away. I don't think it's going to reveal an awful lot because I think the resin's going right down to the bottom here and uh, I don't think it'll even reveal the circuit board on the bottom but we'll find out when I get down there. Oh no, that is potted all the way to the hilt. Okay. So my guess is that they might use a single little transformer being pulsed, charging up a capacitor and then discharging it suddenly through the primary coil. It's how many of these little ionizers work. Uh, but in the output, I'm guessing they might have a couple of voltage multipliers or even just a single diode in each output. One going to the uh, one pointing positive towards the, the positive emitter and one uh, pointing away from the negative emitter to actually create the different polarity. I'm just going to keep ripping away the plastic here. Tell you what, I don't think I'm going to see much, but I'll pause briefly. Oh, no, I won't pause, because people complain when I pause. They say, we don't want you to pause. We want to see the whole thing being ripped apart. Right, okay. So here is the little module. This is going to actually work a lot better for the depotting, because once you get the resin out from the plastic case, the solvent can get much closer to it. Yeah, this is fully potted in. It's not coming out easily. Yeah. I like the construction of this. They've got the Loire's coming out the positive and negative. There is a circuit board, actually. That's, that's good. 
uh, not going to reveal too much at this point in time. And the resin is so hard, it's going to be, uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to dip this in the solvent. But I like the fact that the they've potted it in. They just laid the wires down into here and then they put this cap on. And the cap has got these glued pins to hold it in place. But it's also got these pins that just push down on those uh, emitters and effectively lock everything in place. And it's quite nice. It's a universal case. It looks like it's got a facility to put a metal plate in the front. So this might also double up as an ozone generator in another product. But in this case, it's just open to allow air to flow through. And in the case of a fridge, it would certainly create the positive and negative ions. But most importantly, it would create very small trace levels of ozone, which is, well, nature's cleaning agent in the air. It's a natural occurring uh, gas in the air outdoors. Uh, at a really low level, like 0.04%, and uh, not 0.04%, 0.04 parts per million. Very low. It doesn't take much to have an effect. But I can get that smash, smash, fresh, ozone smell when it's plugged in and running because there's obviously something happening, but I don't see a corona discharge of the, of the electrode. So tell you what, I'm going to uh, put this in solvent now, and uh, the video will continue uh, days later once it's all dissolved. A couple of days later and it's completely depotted. It, it wasn't happening very quickly in the acetone that I normally use to try and soften the resin so I ended up using heat to take it off in layers with the hot air gun. So it's a single-sided circuit board. Uh, surface mount one side and just blank on the other and uh, it's interesting because it's got holes through it. You can see the resin, the red resin still in some of the holes um, and that's to presumably act as extra to make sure that air can escape from underneath and the resin gets right through and it provides good insulation between all the different sections. It is literally, and it's nothing like I was expecting, it's literally two voltage multipliers, but quite short ones. This one is a six-stage multiplier with 12 capacitors and uh, six of these double diodes feeding the negative output via a 10 meg ohm resistor as a safety current limiter. Uh, not really rated for the voltage, but that's what it is. Uh, and the positive end comes from the uh, the middle, the live and neutral here, um, which splits that the negative end and the positive end. And it's a four-stage voltage multiplier with uh, the eight capacitors and the four double diodes leading out once again to, through a 10 meg ohm resistor to the positive output emitter. The live and neutral, the neutral is connected straight to the end of some capacitors. The live is going via a... Uh, 200k resistor and I've doodled the schematic down here I shall show you it I shall zoom out a bit it's quite a a tall schematic so there's the connection going on I've actually got that slightly wrong that should have been uh, live there going via because I no noticed now that I'm looking at the circuit board that this is how I'd have done it I'd have had live going to the uh, the sort of centre point of those capacitors, I wouldn't have taken it via the diodes because that does provide a direct route to the ground. But uh, the circuitry is divided into those two multiplier sections and I would have thought that those, that small, that really tiny multiplier section, I'm used to the, like the mountain breeze ones of 11 uh, sections, 11 stages of 22 capacitors and 22 diodes. So this uh, small number uh, I didn't think it would have the effect, but there's a definite effect because you definitely get the ozone. You can definitely feel the breeze and you put your hand up to it. I, I was so doubtful about this and I saw it. I was thinking, did I imagine the smell of ozone? No, I didn't. Uh, I put some new emitters on it, con some new connections, and I tried it and put it in a bag to actually capture the, uh, the sort of ozone and make it more sort of concentrated. It was definite, you know, just a few seconds would make a very strong ozone smell. So it is creating that difference. I don't know if it's the the short uh, multipliers compensated for by the fact you've, they've got the two electrodes next to each other. And that basically, because certainly as I put them closer together, you could get a strong uh, corona discharge in the dark. You could actually see the slight corona discharge on the edge of it. Enough to take a photo of with a sensitive camera. But it, it's even then, it's just a few grainy pixels. So I wonder if it's uh, the secret. Uh, ultimately, this is maybe just an ozone generator with a slight bias towards negative ions. But I wonder if the real thing here is that uh, very slight trace ozone generation for 
for keeping the fridge sanitary inside and prolong the life of food by killing bacteria and stuff on its surface. It's very interesting. It's very strange. Now, the components. These capacitors are... Well, let me grab a meter. Let me grab a meter. And we'll turn it to the 200 nano range. And I shall dab it across a couple of those capacitors. They are typically about 80 nanofarad-ish. 74, measure another one, 78, 79. So, say somewhere between 70 and 80 nanofarad, which surprised me because these are just 1206 capacitors. I wonder if they're being used at the correct voltage because I would expect in a circuit of this type, on the supply voltage of this type, them to be rated about 630 volts. And you do get uh, 1206 capacitors rated for 630 volts, but usually they're just in the sort of like, the higher values are about 10 nanofarad, but in this case, it's a lot higher. Also, these diodes, each uh, package here contains two diodes uh, in series with this a sender tap to that middle pin. And uh, they're marked A7, but uh, I couldn't immediately find a package rated for what I'd normally expect to be a thousand volts um, for this type of diode. It would just usually be a standard one amp diode, thousand volts. It wouldn't necessarily be a one amp in this tiny package, but it, I would expect to be that higher voltage. So there we go. It's interesting. Unusual. Really not what I was expecting. Now I wonder what's in the 110 volt version, because that couldn't really use the multiplier, I don't think. Um, and what's in the 12 volt version, which would definitely have to use the little step up transformer circuit intriguing i may end up buying some to take a look inside them but this is a definitely a very neat arrangement very minimalist strange uh, almost tempted to build something similar might actually tempt to build something similar but with a larger through hole components and just the two emitters in the vicinity of each other to see if i can create the same effect but that's interesting stuff definitely not what i was expecting but uh but actually more interesting result of that because the the circuit board is kind of neat and it's what they've achieved from just a small number of multipliers is extraordinary. I wonder if that's partly down to the sharpness of the carbon fibre emitters because they are super microscopically sharp at the end. I don't know how that goes with time. Does the corona discharge, does it gradually erode them away? I'm not really sure. But interesting stuff. Actually quite fun to take apart and really surprising circuitry inside.